Hello, hello. My name is April Malone with Yes, I Work From Home, and this is the podcast. Before I introduce our guest today, I just want to make an appeal to anyone that is interested in interviewing on a podcast like this. You can go ahead and send me a message at april at yesayworkfromhome.com or go to the guest interest form at yesayworkfromhome.com forward slash podcast forward slash guest. All right. Today we have Shane Spraggs from near Vancouver, Canada. And he is a productivity um, remote work expert and just a new author of a book. So go ahead, Shane, why don't you go ahead and tell us all about it? Thank you, April. Uh, Yes, I I run a company called Bertira. We've been in business since 2007, providing remote work services uh, to large enterprise firms. Our focus is uh, helping remote teams be more productive. Uh, our, Our key area of business right now is in sales. We do. Uh, we work with sales teams to take all the operational tasks off their plate, so that they can focus on selling. They do what they do well. Okay. So, um, are you providing like software as a service? No, it's just people. Really, uh, we have a bunch of lovely individuals who are all across Canada. Uh, we f- tend to focus on rural areas, so small towns. Uh, we like we like to find people who uh, may not have as much opportunity working where they live. Uh, and, but yet have really good experience, really good background. And uh, we bring them into the company and, and uh, help them through the power of remote work, uh, work with large companies um, and, you know, and give them opportunities they otherwise would never have. Uh, and yeah. Can you, can you clarify that a little bit more? So like you're, fi- you're helping find people that work in small or. or yeah. Our, our or niche. Remote? Yeah. Our niche employer, sorry, employee is someone who is from a smaller town um, who may have a gap in their resume possibly because they had, they had kids or they, you know, they, they've left one job to go to another one. That job no longer exists, or they're helping a, a you know, infirm parent or, or, uh, or a family member. Uh, so they, they might not necessarily have all the opportunity to work in a, uh, in the, in the career of their choice in the town that they live in through their, maybe not circumstances that are there fully under their control. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, fantastic individuals and they they provide a lot of uh they have a lot of experience and uh we have a number of uh, stories so for example uh we'll have a uh, you know a a, a mom who's just really recently had a kid who can provide us with five hours a week and then as like as that, that child grows older uh, they're able to spend more time with us and you know we have uh, at least a couple of stories for people on staff right now who, who went through that and they're out 30 40 hours a week let me just make sure I'm getting it all straight. Are they working for your company, Ventura? Yes. Yes. They work for our company, but we obviously have clients who they work for. Okay. And what services are they providing? Um, well, it's mostly uh, remote enablement, uh, sales enablement stuff. And that's a, those are some big words that basically say that we're offering operational uh, support. So uh, everything from process improvement to uh, meeting minutes to action items to making sure people are staying on top of uh, their, um, their keeping people accountable uh, mm-hmm. and then supporting the teams and letting them do the things that they do best. So from a sales standpoint, that would be a selling a person who's, who's good at selling would go and do sales. Okay. To help them be accountable for their productivity. Yeah. And what, certainly one of the things we, we know, and you probably experienced this as well, is that, um, People who are working remotely uh, have a lot going on and it's very difficult to keep track of all the things that they said they would do. And so we help doing them do that. We have a, we have a, a, a methodology we call days of the week that we use to keep people accountable. Uh, we keep track of all the tasks that the action items that people are supposed to have committed to uh, and help them finish it and keep them front of mind. Okay. Help them prioritize things. Yeah. Um, I can think of a few ways that this would be similar, but maybe not the exact same as like an executive assistant. Yeah, it can be um, in some cases like that, but we, it's less, less for a general, for an individual, more for a team. So we'll go into a sales team, uh, make sure that teams action items are are being, um, being generated and captured. Uh, A lot of times we'll we'll look at uh, the various, for the sales teams, especially, we ha- they they have lots of things. So these the clients we have are have multi million dollar uh, sales, and and so 
uh, we, we helped them run a sale like a project. So a new deal will come in and the, in order for them to close the deal, they have a whole ton of things they have to do, like get sign offs, you know, go get commit, you know, approvals from whatnot. And we'll help bring all those, those uh, uh, items together and help them stay on track to get the deal finished. So the salesperson is not doing it. So it's a little bit more like a personalized version of say something like Zendesk. I uh, possibly. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. So let's talk a little bit about, um, how you got into this. I know that you've been doing this for a few years. Yeah. I am one of the victims of the, of the, uh, of the apocalypse. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the big, the big sick, whatever you want to call it. Um, I literally started this job in April, 2020, and that date should be fairly familiar to most of your listeners. Uh, that was when, uh, you know, March, 2020 hit. And of course the pandemic did its thing and up, upended all of us up to that point, I was running a software development uh, team for a startup, um, building a comic book reader. It was actually really cool. Uh, 3d comic book, uh, parallax, uh, experience on a, on a mobile device. And, uh, my, my role is product owner, uh, VP product on that team. And it kind of just went away as soon as the pandemic hit. It never, uh, and it so, never got finished. No, it, uh, it, uh, there was maybe some other challenges around us having an audience that wanted to pay for it. Um, but it looked, looked great. We had some mm-hmm. really good content for it. We only, you know, up I had literally just in the beginning of March been in Chicago at the Comic Con in Chicago to to help promote it. And we're all guns blazing, and and the pandemic hit, and people kind of everyone just had no, no one wanted to spend any money on anything else. You know, they just kind of <laughs> you know save food, buy toilet paper. Oh yeah, you know, fig, you, know you remember you know, most people. Well, it'll be one of these stories we tell our kids later on in life. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, the. Um, so uh, I started working with uh, Vertira as a, the manager of operations and um, worked with them for, you know, worked up to director of operations, VP operations, and uh, now I'm CEO. Wow. So that happened, that happened in, uh, in the summertime. The woman who, uh, who, uh, who owned and owns and runs the company, uh, Cynthia Watson, who I also, also co-wrote the book with, uh, she, um, she, she, she wanted to take some time to, step out of the limelight and uh, focus more on, on, on training. And so we have actually launched a separate company called Vertira Academy uh, recently that which she's focusing on. Her, she's got a background in remote work. She had actually wrote her master's on it I think back in 1979. Uh, oh, wow. She's been doing remote work since remote work was cool. Oh my goodness. Uh, and um, and uh, yeah, um, they're very passionate about it and has lots of experience to share. I was graduated from high school in 1997. <laughs> so back then I don't think that remote work was really on many people's like yeah I knew people horizon. back then even back then who were doing work remotely but it was a lot of things you know there's a lot of specialized software for it you know mm-hmm. phone calls um you know I we had I, I worked at Disney for a number of years back in the early 2000s uh 2010 2014 and we had, we had people there who were working remotely, never saw them. This concept of getting on a video only happened right. in the pandemic, right? They really, it's when working, it really took off. I started working from home in 2008 and we had no cameras on our yeah. computers, none, like, which was great because I was working at night and I could wear whatever <laughs> I wanted. Um, but uh, 1997, that's interesting. So can you tell me a little bit about that? spinoff um and what they're going to be doing or what she's going to be doing with that yeah well quite simply we have a a, people into your system yeah um well we've we uh we essentially at the start of the pandemic recognized that maybe there's some value in us sharing this company and her um years of experience of working remotely to companies who may have been forced into it um through the pandemic uh, and hopefully to provide some additional support some help and um and to supplement the book if you, if you read the book and you really enjoy what it has to say we now have courses that relate to it so uh we are uh we're putting together right now a remote uh a remote basics we have a course on netiquette so we have a course on uh, uh days of the week which is our again our methodology for running keeping track of tasks remotely uh, we have a saying that we we say a lot is that we we assume no one's paying attention 
uh, and uh, and so days of the week takes care of that. No one no one's uh, paying attention, and no one can uh, no one follows up and remembers what they, they need to need to do. Uh, and that's where we come in. We we help people stay on track of things, and it seems to be more so remotely than in person for whatever mm-hmm. reason. But, so the book is the power of remote. Did you build the book with a course in mind, or did that just kind of happen naturally out of it? Yeah, I can't. I think Cynthia, uh, you know, she has tons of ideas, tons of experience she wants to share. And the the book was really, you know, how to we had we we spent a lot of time just narrowing down exactly what she wanted to put in it. Uh, and my my contrib- contribution was very much from the management side of things, uh, and and providing some more uh, color on on culture and how to keep people engaged. Uh, whereas she's very much in, you know involved in the in the um, the tech the technicalities of working remotely and uh, and some of the, the nuance that maybe a lot of companies miss in terms of, of what makes a good remote worker versus a not, not good remote worker. She's a very big thing. We have a whole chapter on camera usage, for example. Right. Um, you know, this whole idea you have to be on camera hundred percent of the time is, is just, it's not only is it, is it wrong? It also causes burnout. You know, there's a lot of people like, yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that the meetings I have are, are fairly like, you know, one-on-one, you know, and they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're perfect for one for, for uh, cameras. Yeah. You want to see the people react. You want to, you know, interact with them. A lot of people are on these big meetings where you're one of 20 participants watching someone do a presentation and you have no choice but to sit there and stare and it's just inhumane. Yeah. Uh, and so we just, pr- you know, we promote this, this uh, balance between, you know, understanding, you know, on camera versus off camera, understanding when it's necessary. Yeah. It's interesting how different, uh, companies handle that like culturally differently um my husband's company whenever i see him on a i guess it's not it's maybe teams now it used to be slack yeah. um i would say 90 percent of the people just have their their photo up yeah um i mean everyone knows who it is they know each other's voices um i think there's like one guy who likes to be on camera <laughs> you know and that's just his yeah. thing um, but we all know that, you know, each other are there. Um, if I'm, I, I attended a conference recently and I was there the whole time and every once in a while I turn my camera on, especially if we were expected to interact in some way, raise yeah. hand or something. Um, but I was like eating a sandwich and I don't want people to watch me chewing, you know, <laughs> I'm um, sure they don't want to watch you. Eat <laughs> and I'm going to just yeah. say it. I needed to run to the restroom and it's like yeah. right there. I just kept the door open. I'm going to just say it, um, and turn up the volume so I could hear I'm muted, you know, and I'm not missing anything. Um, and I think it's okay to just be human. Um, so I yeah. appreciate, um, I always think it's a little weird when everyone turns the camera on this, like that's really not necessary. Yeah, we we um, we ran a, actually a survey at the start of the pandemic. It was in uh, uh, June of 2020, uh, so it's actually really good timing. We got about 1,700 respondents uh, to get some gather some feedback. At the time, most companies were you know they were just panicking and reacting to the change. You got to be on camera. You know that was their their first attempt at, at control and accountability. Like mm-hmm. I need to know you're working. You know otherwise mm-hmm. how do I know really? You know well you. Yeah have to trust them right so um which is a new thing for a lot of companies as well but we we're planning on rerunning that uh oh, it we're planning on rerunning <laughs> that uh that uh survey to see how it's changed because i think you're right a lot of people kind of settle down a little bit yeah i mean it definitely the um, management styles have been forced to change and um some companies embraced the trust a little sooner than others and a lot of yeah. people's places rather than being like turn your camera on they're like come back to work now um, and so 2023, I, I'm seeing a lot of people being more or less forced to go back into a hybrid or full-time in the office position again Yeah. Um, for people that would prefer to be remote. And I'm watching people just jump ship and be like, well, if you're going to be like that, I'm going to just go ahead and work remote for someone else. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I like it a little bit too. So I had, I got the chance to see this uh, back in the t- early tech days. I'm sure everyone remembers the Google Plex and the, you know, the Apple, um, with the spaceship they have you know, this whole concept of building these large large buildings that people would work in without walls and this whole whole idea was based on well you can all collaborate together well in reality it's a really loud pen of people who yeah. can't work together because there's just so much distraction right you know people come back but yet large companies didn't learn from that lesson either it, it's there's always a disc it seems to be a disconnect between what 
executives want and mm -hmm. how they think they should get it uh, and what productivity actually is for, for somebody who's working. And maybe even how executives work versus the productive, the productive part. How do I yeah. say it? Productive, the productive <laughs> yeah. part of their team. Absolutely. Um, not that, not that CEOs aren't productive, but they might have to collaborate in a different way than Absolutely, the yeah. rest of the workers. Boy, I just like, <laughs> we're just going to keep rolling. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's one of the things that I've learned is just, you know, we're humans and I'm not, I don't need to act as though I'm st standing on the stage every moment. And, you know, with my refined speech, mm -hmm. um, you know, even in a meeting, I feel like um, with the pandemic, with now that we're seeing people's cats and dogs and, you know, the human part of their, you know, world, um, I feel like some people have relaxed a little bit and some people haven't. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think it, uh, look, I have my I have a cat here as well. I, I love having her on my lap and quite often. She'll just sit there for hours and I would never get that at the office, you know, and uh, right. you know, it's just these little things. And I feel like it in some ways has helped teams to be like, oh, you know, how's your family? You know, just because you know now that they have one. Yeah, um, absolutely. In some ways it's good. I, I don't know. It's, it's the water cooler talk of, of the 21st century. <laughs> So, um, but how done, how on earth did you get this job in April of 2020? You had one month and you just ran yeah. straight to remote. You were like, you know well, what? I, I have a, I have a family connection with, uh, with Pratira. So okay. I happened to get in that way. Yeah. It was a bit of luck. Really. Okay. So that's helpful. Yeah. Um, and how was your transition? That's a great question. I, uh, I have been working with computers for a long time. Um, I'm very comfortable with doing things over video, doing things on, on Slack or Teams, or we have also, we use WebEx at our, our, our office. Um, and uh, that part was not a problem for me. I was had no problem with that. It did take a little bit getting used to not seeing anybody anymore, you mm -hmm. know, and, and um, but I, I think on I, camera or off camera. <laughs> I, well, most of the company was off camera. So I had a few people who would go on camera with me uh, and, uh, you know, at least do the one-on-ones with me on camera for the most part. I got, I got a chance to, to know them better as well that way. Um, and it, there's, there's a certain amount of, of, um, kind of loneliness that you that comes across you when you, you end your day and you, you, you turn meetings off and you're sitting there by yourself in your, your house. Um, I quickly came to realize that the main change for me was to not source relationships from the people I work with. And I don't mean I don't want to be, have relationships with anybody, but you know, the, the real tight relationships, the, the friendships and the, and whatnot from, from, um, from the people I work with. And I quite quickly turned to the people I know in, in my hometown yeah. and I started, I decided I was going to hike every morning. Yeah. So I've got it with, there's a mountain I have in town here uh, called Knox mountain. It's just about, in town. Uh, just in town. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, it's about, um, what is it? It's about an hour to go up and down it. Uh, and every morning I get up with a, with a bunch of friends and we go up the, up and down that mountain. I was there this morning at uh, six 30 in the morning. And um, not only does it give me exercise, it gives me the people connection I get, I need on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and it keeps me a little more sane because I can, I can, I can go to them and, and tell them all the stories that I don't get a chance to tell. Cause when I'm on it, yeah. when I'm doing business, I'm not getting on a call and, and just sharing stories. It's a, you know, mm -hmm. I would be wasting people's time if yep. I do that. Yeah. Uh, and those opportunities just don't exist. So for me, it became getting that experience, sorry, getting that experience outside of work. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that's overall more positive yeah. for everybody. Right. Both here. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely agree. And that's one thing that I had to embrace um, that transition when I started working from home in 2008. I was so accustomed to just turning around and telling Denise, the lady behind me, every random thought that came into my head. She was <laughs> a lot more focused than I was, let's just say. <laughs> she got her work done despite me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but when I started working from home, I think that I almost like physically turned myself a few times to be like, and then I realized Denise wasn't there yeah. and it took me a minute. Um, thankfully when I started working from home, I also had just moved into a very fantastic, um, city, uh, Springfield, Missouri. You wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily guess it, but, um, 
it was a really neat place. It was a college city. So a lot of my friends were like young married people, single people. We all went to the same church and it just like, there was always a concert to go to or a movie or an art walker, um, just something happening constantly in the city. And so I had plenty, it was a really good transition for me. Okay. I feel for the people that had to make that transition during the pandemic. Yeah. Did you start the mountain hiking in the spring right away? Well, it was, yeah, we started April of 2020. We actually, um, uh, you know, we obviously couldn't go to a gym anymore. I really I, we needed to have some physical activity. Otherwise, I you know, wouldn't be healthy. Uh, and so that was, yeah, middle of April, we decided to start doing it and uh, made, carved out time for it. It's you know, really, it's crazy. We really shouldn't be doing it. You know, I had to, it was up at 5.30 this morning to go walk up a mountain and back again. Why shouldn't it, you be doing it? Why? Well, it's because it, it's, you know, it, it it's, it, it, from a schedule standpoint, it's, ridiculous it's getting up wait it was still dark when i came home <laughs> i was going to ask if it was dark <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know the moon was out some you know it's not morning it's still nighttime for the most part uh and uh, it just doesn't seem logical it that's exactly the right words for it it doesn't seem logical cuz uh but you know we make time for it and it just you know if we didn't do it then we wouldn't be able to do it any other time yeah. and uh, we made it work you know, i've got young i well, i had young kids at the time I've got two uh, two daughters. One's uh, now graduating grade twelve. The other one's graduating, going to grade nine next week, next year. Oh wow! Um, and at the time, you know, I still need to make time for them in the morning. Uh, yeah. So it was just trying to fit it all in. Uh, and right, I'm glad I did. So in the summertime, it's light out during those hours, right? Yes. Oh yeah, in the summertime it's, it's pretty nice. You, you can walk up the net because it gets pretty cold here during the winter. I was going to ask, uh, are you doing this year round in Canada? Yeah. We, yeah. So the, we definitely hiked up the mountain in minus 20, uh, sorry, Celsius, not, not Fahrenheit. I don't but know what that still, is. And that's still, still pretty dang cold, actually. It's just, it's just cold. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> uh, we have special, we have special uh, crampons for our shoes to give us uh, control, you know, so we can slide, slip on ice and all that stuff. So it's just, it, it's a thing we do and it's more of a, it's, mental and physical um uh training i guess and or, yeah. or safety you know how you want to put it but it keeps us sane and fit well that's way better than the five minutes that i walked around the block yesterday so well everyone has their everyone has their things and, and that at least that's something you can do and you can say you did it right it's funny because the lady that i just interviewed before you who's going to be my two-part um episode before yours um <laughs> I was in a focus mate session with her. So that's the accountability where we're both kind of logged into a video call and we state our intentions and, you know, it's our way of being productive. Um, I logged into the meeting and I was like, I have got to go stretch my legs and I'll be, and she wasn't there yet. So I typed into the chat and I said, I'll be back in two minutes. And it was actually five minutes because I did a whole lap around the, um, and she waited for me, thankfully, because I was already, you know, there and I had already messaged yeah. her. And ended up being a great connection. We actually had a fun talk at the beginning, at the end of our session. And then we had a basically two or three hour conversation with recording time and non-recording time um, <laughs> right before this call. Um, so I'm happy. I feel like these video calls meet my social need when I'm not getting that outside Yeah. Um, because it's a real conversation. Yeah. Work absolutely. calls maybe have a little bit of a different vibe, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, um, we do things at, uh, at work to try to interplay some of that. So I'm sure you've heard of icebreakers, but we, we use them religiously. Um, you know, any long meeting has to have an icebreaker where we spend the first five, 10 minutes just doing something that's not work and you know, mm -hmm. sharing some little thought, playing a little game, you know, sharing a laugh. Um, and, and that helps that's keep everybody yeah. connected. Yeah. And that's enough, you know, and, uh, and everyone, you know, we also recognize that it doesn't, it doesn't supplement all interaction. There's still value in getting together in person. Right. And so once in a while, um, last time I was in, uh, met the, most of my team was in November. Uh, but we'll get together at least once a year to, to see everyone to, just to check in to see how tall people are. <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> that you say that because there have been several people that I've met online that when they stand up, I'm like, Oh, you are about a foot taller or shorter. Than <laughs> I expected. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned, uh, I think it was before we recorded that a lot of your team works in a different time zone than you. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah. So Canada is quite large, as is the States, obviously. Um, and we have uh, people spanning um, Atlantic time through to Pacific time. That's four hours difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, most of my team is having supper. Uh, the bulk of our team is out in Nova Scotia. Uh, that's Atlantic time. And so, so that's even an hour before Eastern time. Yeah. So there, it's about 530 there for them now. Okay. Um, and one of, you know, it's 130 for me. And honestly, it's probably the best, the best thing for me and them. Uh, any business I've ever worked, they've always tried to have ways of giving some, you know, some time to be productive. Mm -hmm. You know, don't schedule meetings because otherwise you end up with a schedule that's got like nothing but meetings here and there. And you have right. half hour here, 15 minutes there. Um, this forces me to have an afternoon off of where I can be productive. And it forces them to get a morning. I, I often wish I had the morning. I'd be more productive. <laughs> no, you're hiking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, it's fantastic uh, because it forces us to get all of our conversations done in a five-hour span. Um, and you'd never be able to do that if it wasn't for time zones. You, you, people would break the rules. If you had a rule at the office that between, you know, you can only work between nine and two, uh, sorry, meetings between nine and two. Well, people would break that rule within the first two weeks mm -hmm. um we also we also try to have a no meeting fridays as well which people are generally pretty good at. we no one has any recurring meetings on fridays mm -hmm. but uh we still get i still have you know, several hours of meetings that day um but that yeah that's that's the main thing i really enjoy that um the time zone difference it gets me a, this block to be productive so your company helps support other companies and so you're kind of like the model of what you're helping other companies do in some ways. What kind yeah. of schedules are people actually working? Are you on the clock from certain hours? Um, you know, it really depends on the client. You know, uh, most of the time we pair our teams up with someone in the same time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, the Atlantic time can work with Eastern time. We have people in, you know, uh, in, in Alberta as well, which is uh, mountain time. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to work more Pacific. Uh, and so we try to make it as, as comfortable as possible. A lot of times it works in our favor as well, because they, we can continue working on something well after the client's gone, gone off work uh -huh. and have it ready for them the next day. Right. Our, for example, our graphic designer is out in Vancouver uh, and uh, she'll continue working on something and have it ready for the next morning for the, for a client in the morning. That's awesome. Um, and we just, it make it, you know, there, it, it gives us opportunity, right? So there's, there's ways to take advantage of it. There's actually also a benefit sometimes for having the very time zones. Let me just say this one. I, I have younger, younger kids. Uh, when I started working from home, it was before they were even born before I even met my husband actually. And so I've had, I've been working from home their entire life. Wow. Um, my oldest is now 12 and my youngest is seven. So I have a middle kid too. He's 10. <laughs> um, don't want to <laughs> leave him out. He's a middle kid. Um, but the thing is, is that because of having young children, I've actually worked opposite shifts from my husband for most of right. our marriage. Right. And, okay. um, so I actually, for several years, was I was working nights when I was working as a medical transcriptionist for Mayo Clinic. And then I started teaching English in China, two kids in China. Wow. And adults. Um, so that allowed me, it was terrible to wake up at 2 a.m., but it was wonderful to be done with work by 7 a.m. before my kids had to get up to go to school. And so that meant that we didn't have to have a part-time nanny during those years, um, which we had had done before when I was working full nights because I wasn't right. sleeping otherwise. I was only sleeping for four hours if I had a nanny. Um, and so sometimes when someone works the opposite shift, and I'm trying to think of how that might work in your company, um, if someone from the West Coast was working for an East Coast team, that might just give them a little bit more flexibility with their day. Yeah. And that's one of the things we, we really, really, really push is that, you know, and we talked a little bit earlier, I think before the, the, the um, recording started about having to trust your, you know, your employees and um, instead of dictating what they have to do all day. Um, and part of that trust is that letting them go do an appointment, without having to yeah. measure every single hour of their day. And if they can get their, if they've got a, a deliverable due, due this evening, well, they can get it done at six instead of four. Mm -hmm. or you know because they had to go to a doctor's appointment all the power to them right yeah. or they had to go pick up something at the store or you know pick up the family or you know go pick up kids from the school there's lots of reasons that um 
people and people just need flexibility. And then yeah. that's one of the things we really push. I've always been hourly most of my working life. Um, recently, I've been doing more project-based work, but um, my husband has been salaried for the last few years. And I like that. I like that he can go and pick up the kid. I'll forget. I'll forget. Like we had a kid that um, was barfing at school the other day. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Um, I'm like, just say it. Um, yeah, she vomited at school like five times. And so oh, she no. picked up and I was like, already, like I was in the middle of teaching and I had another project and I had people waiting for me on things. And I was like, okay, now I have to drop everything. And my husband was like, I can go get her. I can work from home. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I forget sometimes you have that flexibility. And I do too mm-hmm. with some of my work, but some of my work is still in person. Right. So, um, man, I, I like that. So that you offer that to your, to your workers. Yeah. It just happens naturally. And, you know, it's part of the work-life integration. I think the whole concept of work-life balance is probably uh, not the right way of describing it. Cause for me, yeah, balance seems like it, they're opposites, you know, that work is opposite from, from, <laughs> from life and you have to balance them. Um, I enjoy work and I have to integrate it into my life and I, I enjoy life. I have to integrate work into it. Right. I'm looking uh, and, at your, sorry, I'm interrupting you. No worries. I'm looking at your thing that you wrote and you said, I have a pretty good handle on being able to moderate my work-life balance. It gives me flexibility to do the occasional urgent project. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, um, at work, there'll be something that comes up and you'll have to, you need time to work on it. And, you know, if that means I have to spend a few more hours in the weekend doing that and I can want to take that time back. Um, the, the roots of our, actually probably easiest to explain the roots of the company. Um, when it was first started, it was, it, we had a lot of people who surfed in the company and yeah. Like literally surfed, like literally in the surfed, water? not web surf, just in the water. <laughs> um, and they would work 10 hours a day so they could take advantage of the tides uh, or the good days. Cause you never, you didn't necessarily know when, when you'd have a good day of surfing. And so they would, they would front load their week to be able to take advantage of more of the surfing on the Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. Um, and, uh, and just made it work. You know, you can, if you need to do 40 hours in the week, well, you can do 10 hours the first couple of days and, you know, six hours the next few days. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. and we all also have this whole four day work week thing coming up based on the same concepts of trust and, and the need to be productive and what the, what fuels productivity. So I think we're going to see some real, I'm hopeful that we'll see some real progressive strategies in the future for what, uh, well, we'll let chat GPT take over the rest of the time. <laughs> we'll need something right. else. We'll need to keep ourselves busy some other way, but, uh, we still have to edit chat GPT at this point. So yeah, um, this version, it's this fun is... to play with, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that day will come. Yeah, my, it's not too far. my job with Mayo Clinic was, went away with advances in speech recognition technology. And I know that there are some people that are feeling really nervous with chat GPT. Um, but I feel like there's always another area that's going to need you. So just as long as people are able to be flexible, just yeah. always something. I actually just interviewed the lady before you. And she said that the tax people are all hitting retirement age, like right now. Okay. Um, and so there's always work to be done because taxes never go away. <laughs> so, Perfect. Uh, I, 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 a computer can definitely do my taxes for me. Um, I can't. It's a little too <laughs> complex still. Okay. You have been working with this company for three years. Um, yeah, it would be three years in April, which is just around the corner. Yeah. Can you kind of walk me through the day in the life of someone who's using your service? So let's talk about like, say a sales team of six people who's selling a medical product. How would they benefit from your service? Um, yeah, we do a so yeah. Let's see here. Uh, we have a one of the one of the areas we support is with uh, deal support, and so uh, a deal will come in, a sale will come in, and that deal will require um, you know a lot of administration, a lot of operational stuff to get all the you know dot all the all the i's and cross all the t's, and so that might uh, you know. Um, mean working with it to get a sign off from somebody it might mean that there's a um, another uh, there may be a need to ship something so they go organize the shipping for that deal uh it might mean that there's a return they have to deal with so we have a you know list of, of returns to to deal with and typically the salesperson handles those and so on a, in a given day um it'll depend based on which team they might attend a meeting 
uh, take minutes, uh, follow up with those minutes. They may have minutes from other <laughs> meetings to follow up on. Uh, they will have uh, uh, reports to run and uh, to report back to, uh, to team leads um, or to the sales team. And, uh, and it's really all about supporting the team to remove any of the operational tasks. Uh, and sometimes that means observing the work that they're doing and looking for a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of it's structured and, and comes in, uh, you know, we fairly fast paced and then uh, there's some, some room there for uh, innovation. Um, and it, yeah, it's a lot of meetings and, and uh, report taking and minute writing and, and that sort of thing. And are you entirely Canada based or do you also support the U.S.? No, we support we support you uniquely. We, we, we all the people we work with are in the states. Uh, oh, really? We're, yeah. So our, the large the companies we work with. Uh, so, for example, we work with Cisco and Dell, uh, and uh, we support them from Canada. Oh wow! And is your team that works as a support? Are they both, or are they all Canadian? We have a couple people in the states, um, but for the most part, they're they're from Canada. Interesting. Um, and so like on a bigger scale, so I, I said a, a team of six people, what about like a team of a hundred salespeople? Does it change? Do you have like hierarchy with multiple people yeah. serving with different um, specialties or anything? We have the, those teams get broken up into individual sales teams as well. So we, we, a good example might be that uh, sorry, our, 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 our basic pattern is for about four salespeople, four, a four person team, uh, it takes about 10 hours a week of support. Okay. So it gives you a sense of how much time we spend. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we have a number of people supporting um, a larger sales you know, collection of teams, right? So uh -huh. um, there's a whole bunch of, you know, the, they will have their teams broken up to support various clients and we will support them uh, on a team by team basis. And then um, a smaller team of four, then that one support person who's maybe working 20 hours could actually be supporting two teams. That's right. And we allows us to, to um, because it's fractional work, it allows us to uh, have multiple people do the, provide that service. And so people have time for vacations and, you know, if they're not available one week or they get, you know, they get sick, someone else can cover them for them. Um, and that's only one part of our, our business. We also have a, a, a group of people who are doing what we call a channel partner enablement. And that is where we, we work. We take two large, large clients and help them work together uh, and, uh, the enablement side is making sure that the other the partners have all the right collateral for sales. Uh, we do a lot of, um, uh, we help them with, uh, actually a recent example is uh, one of our team members is helping them with uh, Dell Tech World to get their booth set up and that sort of thing. So it's, it's a different kind of work, but with the same roots as, uh, as the other one. Can you break um, that down for someone that's not part of that world? Can you sure, say actually, that again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, actually, I think it just, um, let me my, get myself a, some reference documentation so I don't get this wrong either. Um, but, um, you know, the, uh, where is it here? I've been writing resumes lately, and I have been writing more resumes for people in the sales sector. Uh, right. industry. And so I'm starting to learn more of the vocabulary, but I'm still a little green. So. Um, for the channel partner enablement, uh, we will help a, 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 to a sales team support their channel partner. So a channel partner is a, is a, a company that, that they will use to sell their product through. So, uh, for example, uh, if you sell toys, Toys R Us is a, ch is a partner for you as oh, a channel or I was, yeah. I don't yeah. know if they're still around. We have one okay. in here. Yeah, I don't know you have one? Here. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, and so that, um, that partner needs to know all about your serv your product so they can sell it. And so we, we help support those partners, making sure they have up-to-date collateral or sales material um, and are uh, you know, taking advantage of discounts and, and sales uh, programs and, and, and whatnot to keep the partner happy. And, in some cases, the partner will white label, in other words, sell that service as themselves. Uh, so they need to know more. They need collateral for them that's branded with their own logos on it. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So like there's, it's very seamless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the, uh, the people who are um, 
it's it's something it's a service we can replicate across multiple partners because they all need similar stuff and they uh they they all need the same types of work done just for different people and double checking since you are a remote business all of your support is happening remote or is any of yeah. it ever happening in in real life, in real nope. person in real life <laughs> it's all happening remote at the end of a of a zoom call or actually for us we use teams and webex so i usually ask my guests to go ahead and let me know a little bit more about their own office setup and how that has evolved over the time that you've been working from home can you tell me a little bit about you've mentioned that you have a few kiddos who are growing up um yeah. what has it been like for you for these three years oh, it's been pretty good they're they're mature enough to leave me alone and, and not bother me uh, during work hours um i take up a big portion of the house so i can get it that's a bit of a uh a, a sore spot for them had you been um, but, in the in office before 2020 yeah. like so yeah, you right would up get point. up and leave every day yeah and so that was you know and now i get up you know i i stick around in the house and have breakfast and you know 10 minutes before i have to be on that first call i, I go downstairs um my office space is in the corner of a, of a basement uh and uh there's not much to look at that's why i've got the fancy background graphics um, I got a standing desk, which I use occasionally. Uh, I think that that's, you know, that's one of the, um, the things for me is that I, if I, I find that you do a lot more sitting, uh, and not moving in remote work. Whereas if I was in the office, I get up and move at least walking to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if I wasn't, I would get up and walk around quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's good to have a, you know, good to have a, my, my watch reminds me to stand up every, every hour. I need and, to get my watch back on for that reason. <laughs> it's annoying as hell, but you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I the end of the day is like, okay, I, at least I didn't stand up, sit down for for five hours in a row. I stopped wearing mine because, because my vision has changed. You know, when you turn like in your forties and I'm 44. Yep. So one day in May, all of a sudden I couldn't read my watch and I just stopped wearing it because I was too stubborn to make the font bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these, these are new for me too. I got these last year and I, I somewhat blame remote work because I spend more time staring at my screen than I would at an office. I it was doing pretty be, good. It yeah, might, might just be the era that we live in right now. Like, you know, my, my doctor was surprised at my, when I was 43 and I went to my appointment, he's like, wow, your prescription hasn't changed at all over the pandemic. You can just keep wearing your same glasses. I was like, cool. Um, and this year I'm like, next week I'm going to go. And I, I know it's going to be a very different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so it might not just be the pandemic. Um, yeah. But what are you doing other than standing up and moving around? What are you doing for ergonomics and for eye health? Um, I don't know. Probably not enough. Uh, I, I'm I'm very keen on the ergonomics. I think my chair is very adjustable. I make sure I don't you know I've got I don't put too much pressure on my wrists. And I've got a um, but a, a little I can try and point to it. You obviously can't see it, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, a uh, monitor, sorry, a, a laptop stand that brings mm -hmm. the camera up to eye level and, the, and mm -hmm. the screen up to eye level, so I don't have any neck issues. Yep. Yeah, and I've got a second monitor, which uh, which I think is really important to be able to work off of and have video at the same time. And uh -huh. um, yeah, and, yeah, and, I have uh, yeah. some of those things, but not all of them. Yeah. Um, but it also kind of depends on how tall you are. But since you're Canadian, you might not say it in inches. Do you know how tall you are in inch in foot? Oh yeah, in yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a little over six one. So um, apparently a lot of desks are made for um, your height more than they are made for my height. I'm oh. five foot three. Um, so I'm a lot shorter than you. Uh, so are you finding that you are craning your neck down or up or anything like that, or that the desk is too tall or short or the adjustable desk you want straight for it, it? You're right. I think it maybe it's just perfect for me. So I put it all the way down and it's perfect. Uh, the chair, you know, I think is... It works well, but it, you know, it's kind of its limits as well. Um, yeah, it just seems to be all perfect right now. And then um, how are you supporting your employees who are working remotely in their ergonomics and things like that? Uh, we, uh, we do an ergon ergonomics check on them and we give them tip tips on how to, how to get it set up. Uh, we do offer, um, uh, you know, we, we provide them with laptops. So we, we, uh, and um, we provide them with a headset so they can have a you know clear um, audio and and uh, uh, and voice um, and uh, and for some people we do give a second monitor and and have mm -hmm. that uh, set up. 
Uh, but other than that, uh, most people have their own setups. Um, you were talking about some of the people in your company come from um, possibly having a gap um, for caregiving of, of whatever type um, or other reasons. And I, I know that that is a really big chunk of women with children. Um, are all of your employees um, part-time or you said some of them are all the way up to full-time at this point? We have a number, it, it really depends. Most of the, we have a, a large portion of them are, are full-time. Um, a number of them are full-time, but hourly. So it depends on which hours they, they work each week, sometime between 30 and 40 hours. Um, about 70, 80% of our, our task force is, uh, is women. And do you provide training into this role or is it something that yeah, they have absolutely. to come in with a certain kind of skill set prior? Um, there's obviously a bare minimum that people have to meet. You know, we're not explaining people how to use Word uh, or how to use Zoom. You know, um, you, have to, you have to be able to have some expertise with computers, uh, which we would get through just the interview, interview process to make sure that they meet certain mm-hmm. expectations. Um, but we were actually just talking about this earlier today, about uh, training and, you know, uh, apart from teaching them how about our company, we do a bunch of work to teach them how to be proficient remotely. And uh, that, you know, that includes everything from, you know, uh, how to run a meeting to uh, keeping their messages concise and, and clean, make sure you use the right platform for the right uh, communication um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, making sure you, you stay work within a certain amount of time each day and don't don't overextend yourself and Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. don't send messages at two o'clock in the morning don't Uh, yeah don't reply (laughs) at least schedule (laughs) schedule your emails yeah and is there um a type of person or personality um or history that you're looking for um do you require a certain level of education um it really depends on the role but uh you know that sometimes isn't as much of a factor as whether they show, um, they show, I'm missing the word here. Aptitude. Uh, yeah, aptitude is, yeah. <laughs> they show prominence. Um, for, yeah, I'm missing the word. But, you know, one of, the, one of the main things we look for is we look for a life outside of work. Okay. You know, you know I think that uh, roughly about, uh, you know, 70% of the people can work on, uh, remotely. Mm-hmm. And there's probably about 30% of people just can't. There's just it doesn't matter, you know, they're a bit extroverted, um, no matter how much training you give them, they're not going to be, they're not going to thrive working remotely. And mm-hmm. the same thing goes true the other way of, oh, as well. There's some people just won't thrive in an office. Um, so we do try to look for those patterns. Um, but we know, we recognize that if you have a, a life outside of work, you have something to work for, mm-hmm. right? And you tend to, you tend to get your work done so you can go, you can go do that work. There's or go do that life. So, you know, right. instead of, instead of working, you know, working on the weekends and after hours uh, and following up on every little notification on your phone, you know, it, uh, you have something else, to, you have somewhere else to be and, mm-hmm. something, and part of a life to live. So you, um, we look for people who have outside, ex, you know, their other parts of clubs or uh, have other ac- activities. They have other, um, you know, other reasons to, to, uh, to live life. I, I find it interesting. I'm trying to think of how that would work in the interview because I don't know about Canadian laws, but in the U S there's certain questions you can't ask. So how do you get a sense of someone who does have a life without asking them, do you have kids, you know, or something like that? (laughs) Well, you know, it's just simply what keeps you busy question goes a long way. Yeah. And you can learn a lot about that from, from that. Right. right? That's true. What keeps you busy? Um, Okay. And then what about your own schedule? Are you working eight hours, five days a week, or are you going to do that 10 hour thing where you have your three day weekends? Mine's flexible. I work uh, at least eight hours a day. Um, and, uh, uh some days I'll, I'll, I'll work a little harder cause they're or longer cause there's something going on and then I'll take a break some other time. So, you know, um, you know, just mainly because my team's day ends at my one o'clock you know, I, I will just sometimes take a longer break in the afternoon or take a longer lunch mm-hmm. uh, and it doesn't impact anyone. So it's great. Mm-hmm. So I, I work on it roughly 40, 50 hours a week. Okay. So what is the book going to look like for you? Are you going to end up having to 
I don't know, tour? Are you going to give one to every person <laughs> that you work with? Um, we have given them to everyone and when we, we work with and um, no touring in sight yet, but uh, the main purpose of the book is to just to establish ourselves as thought leaders in the remote space. Right. And then preparing for this course that's coming up. Do you want to talk yeah. about that for a minute? Yeah, we have a, we have, we have a place called Vertira Academy where we're, we're starting to offer a variety of courses. Um, we have a few courses you can just do 24 seven. That's uh, self-directed, self-based. And we have others that you can sign up for and, uh, and get, uh, you know, delivered in person over zoom uh, live and over you know, live remotely i guess is the best way of putting it uh, um, and uh we have of course everything from you know, i think i mentioned uh meeting etiquette uh, we have um remote basics and uh, days of the week is another course we're working on uh and uh, uh let's see i'm trying to remember some of the other courses but it, it's all to support um the setup of you know, making sure people can be successful remotely and about how much time commitment would some of these courses take if someone were to think about getting into um, They vary. We got a course on uh, remote retrospectives, which is, retro if you're not familiar with retrospectives, it's a, it's a tool used in software development quite often. It's a, it's a meeting format that allows them that you spend the first five minutes of the meeting establish, establishing the agenda for the meeting with all the participants. Uh, and, you know, and, while it's something that's done very commonly in the remote, sorry, in, in software development, is fairly new in, in just you know plain white collar businesses. Uh, so the professional space, and so we're introducing this concept of uh, do retrospectives to learn more about um, to about the the project you're working on, uh, to give a voice to all members of your team, get feedback on, on how things are going, and, and uh, look for areas to um, to improve upon. And, uh, and that course itself is about an hour long uh, to, to run through. Uh, it's but, all self-paced though. But the process only takes five minutes in a meeting to cover all those, to cover all that ground? Yeah, so if you, I'll quickly explain how it works. It, uh, it traditionally is done with sticky notes in an office. So you get five, 10 minutes at the start of the, the meeting to write down your thoughts on the sticky notes. And then you put them all on the wall into one of three, you, know, you can, you pre-choose the categories, but some of the typical categories are, what do you want to stop doing? What do you want to start doing? What do you want to continue doing? Mm -hmm. And you put things in those, those buckets. And then you take one of the buckets and say, okay, let's talk about all the things people want to stop doing. And you walk through them all and there'll be duplicates because some people have, you know, say the same thing. Um, but because you ask people to write it down before you, the, before, at the start of the meeting, people tend to be a little more genuine. People tend to, to um, uh, share more. And then because it's facilitated from that point, then it gives everyone an equal voice. You don't have some extrovert talking over top of everybody for uh, while everyone else is listening. Right. Uh, and it, it, it brings forward ideas from everybody. And because sometimes you get new ideas from the ideas people share. Mm. Uh, and generally in about an hour to an hour and a half, you can get through um, a, lot of, a lot of feedback actually. And okay. if you have a larger team, you just say, okay, instead of all the thoughts you have, take, pick, pick your, your, your top three. Okay. You know? What are and three then, things you want to start, stop, and continue? And then as um, you see themes, some people might want to start doing something that someone else wants to stop doing so you can swap tasks possibly it's, or automate yeah. some of those that nobody wants to do. <laughs> well, it, it's, it, it's the start of the conversation. So if you, if you find something that, that it, it looks like a good idea to stop doing, well, you, you can take that, okay, what, what's the next steps then? Maybe two or three people go off and figure out how to stop that or start doing it, you know? So okay. it, uh, it, sometimes you solve the problem. Most times you're just discovering the problems you need to solve in separate okay. conversations. Okay. And then can you give us a little preview to this work week thing that you keep mentioning Monday? You, you were saying like the- Days of the week? Yeah, days of the week, thank you. <laughs> Not Monday, different, yeah. different from Monday. Yeah, it's actually uh, fairly straightforward, but it's again one of those. It's simple, but it, it, you need to when you start working on it. There's complexity to it. Um, basically, on Monday, you you share with everybody the sorry you um, you you tell everyone what their tasks are for the week. So if I'm working, if you're on my team, you get a message from me and say, "Hey, okay, April, you've got four things that you do this week, and this is due this week, this, this day, this day, this day." And so the, the, that's what Monday is. Monday is communicating all the tasks that need to be done this week. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, you're following up. On Thursday, you're looking for risks. And these are risks of 
uh, tasks that may not be finishing. Uh, and on Friday, you publicly share all the statuses, right? So this is uh, the, this is where the, the the key. This is the key part because it's essentially it's essentially public shaming. You said you'd get this done. Here's who actually followed through and got it done. And through a combination of of reminding people that this work is due, reminding them of their commitments, um, and putting their dirty laundry in front of everyone else at the end of the week, it really motivates people to get this stuff done. Keeping I mean, in mind we could that we're not it telling. Yes, more positive way. Yeah. But just, yeah. Um, but what, what the, thing, the key, key thing here is that we're not the ones telling them when things are due. These are just action items that maybe they would have committed to in a meeting. So, for example, we're talking as, okay, yeah, I can do that. Okay, well, April, when can you get that done by? Well, I'll have that done by uh, March 24th. Okay, great. Put that in the book. You know, uh, my, my action item list, we use a tool called Smart Sheets. You could use Excel, you could use Airtable. Any, or any other number of project management tools to keep track of the list. Monday comes, hey, April, do you know you got a task due this week? It's due on, Monday, on, on the 24th, which I think is a Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to check in with you on Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday. Are you, is April really going to get this done? Oh, oh, no, it's a risk. I'm going to raise it as mm -hmm. a risk. Friday comes, hey, everyone, here's all the tasks everyone got done. Congratulations to April because she got hers done as well. <laughs> yeah, I come from education, so we always have to do like the celebrate <laughs> the achievements. <laughs> yeah. But it's a really effective tool, and uh, it really this is one of the key bits to our remote team enablement, where we can go into a team and provide that service and make that team exponentially more productive. Because what happens is many people get into meetings. This is the thing: is that people get into a meeting. They say a bunch of things. Most of it gets forgotten, mm -hmm. right? Because no one wrote it down. If you do write it down, most people put, put it into a, either maybe you do the transcription through Otter uh, or through MS Teams. Okay, well, that's only useful if you go back and look at it. And you still have like an hours long transcription to read through. So let's take it the next step up and you actually do minutes, which is where you're pulling the decisions and, and the, the risks and the action items out of the actual transcription. Okay, now you got a list of things everyone said they committed to. But again, if you just put it somewhere, no one's doing anything with it, you still have to go back and check it. All it really is going to be good for is like, hey, didn't you say you do that thing three months ago? Okay, well, we can go back and look at the, at the, the minutes and say, yes, you did. It doesn't really help you get it done. So for us, the next step, the next logical step is to take that information and put it into a project management tool of some sorts. So we can track the, the stuff that needs to be done. Which project management tool are you using? Oh, we're using Smartsheets right now. Just a basic one. It doesn't have okay. to doesn't have to be too too clever. Um, but uh, that basically it's an Excel sheet on on on, Astro, on the, yeah steroids. Do you have staff from your company who are supporting your team in your sales in the same way that you support other teams? Absolutely. Yeah, we we call it eating our own dog food. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> how how many people are we talking right now? Oh, we're, we're a little over 30 people right now. Okay. So it's not a large company. Yeah. And that's including the workers that are supporting the other companies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if you are looking to grow that, um, who would be the best candidates um, that if someone is looking for work and they're like, Ooh, I like this. I, you know, maybe 20 hours a week would work for me. This looks like this would fit me well. Um, who would be the best people to reach out to you? Uh, we can go to go to web, our website vertira.com v i r t sorry v i r t i r a dot com. We have a careers page on there where we post any of our you know, our uh, jobs. We don't have any openings right now. Um, we've just finished onboarding uh, a lovely woman from um, from Nova Scotia, who's one of the more remote or urban sorry rural people we've we've uh, we've um, brought on recently. She her town. Uh, name is literally the name of a street, and that's basically the size of the town. Oh wow! So she's perfect, perfect candidate for a candidate for us, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, but if someone were to be interested in the future, we're looking at yeah. just people that have good organizational skills or good. There are a lot of yeah, you skills. know, um, we have a lot of uh, people whose background seems to be in education and, and early childhood development. Moving so I'm not sure if there's a thread there. Hmm. Yeah. Um, 
we also have people who uh, have worked in banks. It's really anyone who's had to deal with um, with a, a, a deal with the wrong word, but have experience in a in a, in a business setting. Um, and you know, we teach them the skills they need to to learn. Uh, and uh, you know, we we pick out uh, people who uh, show an aptitude for it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pick on a question that I saw in your guest interest form. Um, you have shared some advice about, you know, using a quality headset, but you said that you recommend that people don't eat at their desk. Can you talk a little bit about why? Cause I eat at my desk all the time. I want to hear your, your explanation about why not. Uh, <laughs> why should I, I? I just think it's some, you know, I, I just think you, it's, uh, it, uh, it's a time to get up and, and take a mental break. Mm-hmm. go enjoy your food um and uh even if you you know use your phone to surf uh social media while you're eating it's a it's a break away from the work and the um I, I find that if i eat at my desk not only do i get my keyboard dirty <laughs> which, uh, right <laughs> oh my goodness you're right absolutely it I'm um listening. i forget what i ate and that's just not healthy right so and you, eat, like you tend watching, to eat more yeah watching tv yeah. and eating so, okay yeah we don't get a lot of cues during throughout the day to take a, to take a break. You know, it's very easy to have a string of five hours of meetings and, and you just sit there and before you know it, it's a, you know, for me, it might be one o'clock in the afternoon and mm-hmm. you know, I'm still here. Um, so it's a good reminder. I need to, to step away from my desk and look outside, stare at the mountains mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and uh, take a break. Okay. I have my story from yesterday. I can tell you about this. So yesterday evening, I was working at my kitchen table almost the whole day and my kids kept just refilling my water glass for me because they're good kids. And I did the little walk around the the block when I was going to meet with Janet, who I just interviewed. Um, But about seven o'clock, I was like, oh my goodness, I haven't eaten all day. I am starving. I am ravenous. And so my husband like went to our garage fridge, came in with the pot, the, what did he make? Like some roast with vegetables the other day. Um, so I microwaved that and I ate it while I was working. I told the person that was in my focus me session, by the way, I haven't eaten all day. I'm going to eat right now. Well, this morning, my husband's like, Hey, I'm going to make some sausage and eggs. Would you like some with some toast? And I was like, absolutely. And then I remembered he fed me breakfast yesterday too. And I ate it also while I was working and I completely forgot because I was distracted with my work and I am like, (laughs) I'm barely appreciative. (laughs) He's feeding me and I forgot. So yeah, I ate a whole meal and I completely forgot. So I'm, I'm listening and my computer desk or my computer can get pretty gross. Yeah. Uh, that's a, you know, personal taste. I, I, I advocate as well for, you know, uh, many years at software development. I know that uh, software development teams can, can expect you to work 60 hours a week, but I know from personal experience that you know, those aren't productive hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's, I, don't, I can't point to any study in particular right now, but I know mm-hmm. that there's been studies that show uh, that when you even work 50 hours a week, you start to be less productive than if you worked mm-hmm. in 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if that goes on for week upon week, you start to even get worse and worse. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's really about recognizing that you have to get the time, the work done in the time you have. Mm-hmm. If you can't, then you need to figure out how to get, how to do less work or set ex- better expectations yeah. um, instead of putting yourself in, uh, you know, putting your, your, putting yourself last. Yeah. Well, that was a good soundbite, but I was going to still ask you a question and see if you come up with another one. (laughs) Do you have any advice for people who are thinking about working from home for the first time? So I know that you're kind of new to this game. Yeah. Um, So when people say, Hey, I want to work from home and you don't have a, you don't currently have an opening at your, um, in your job right now, in your place of employment, um, what advice do you give people who want to work from home for the first Mm. time? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, I think I'll probably just have a conversation with them and set expectations that, uh, you know, that, that some people will find it lonely. Um, you know, if you, if you, if you tend to get your social fix from people at the office, that's going to be a tough thing. Um, make sure you, you have a way to get physical activity outside of the office, outside mm-hmm. of the work, um, buy yourself a, proper desk and you know the one i have is relatively inexpensive from costco it's mm-hmm. a stand-up desk and they sell them about six hundred dollars i think 
Mm -hmm. um, and it does its job. Um, Is it electronic? You know, yeah, I push a button, it goes up and down. Um, and invest in, in, a, in a solid keyboard and mouse and, and you know, the, make sure you have the right equipment. Uh, don't work off, like I don't work off my keyboard from my, my, my uh, laptop. I have a separate, separate keyboard here that I use. Uh, and work at your desk as a working, designate a portion of your house as your office and work at your office. Don't make your whole house the office. Mm -hmm. you know? But having said that, every once in a while, I'll take my laptop to a coffee shop and I'll have a coffee and work there. Mm -hmm. um, that gives me a bit more of the ambiance and a little you know, sense I'm working with people. And um, that, that's, that's sp specific to me. Different mm -hmm. people are going to have different needs. Uh, but uh, yeah, treat it like work. You know, have, some, have some structure to it. Let me see if I can take it to another level with you too. Cause you're coming from the mindset of working for companies you've worked as a software developer and now you're running a yeah. company. Um, but when people are like, I just want to work from home, what can I do? Okay. A lot of people are like, you know, they think of the call center or the MLM selling something out of their garage. Um, what right. options have you seen open up in the last few years? Well, I, I mean, we see tons of, jobs go remotely that uh, just wouldn't have been practical before right? because of the change in technology. Um, I think it more comes down to not necessarily quite the type of work, but a business that's embracing remote work. Um, don't look for a business that's, I mean, there's a number of business, we had this chat earlier, but um, the companies that are moving back into the office, mm -hmm. um, those that are embracing it aren't just letting people remote work, so aren't just letting people re work remotely they're supporting the concept and the nature of all the things that go into do that well yeah uh, so i think we talked a bit about you know that productivity comes from trusting people to do the work to be accountable for the work that they said they would do yeah. well if you're if you're bringing people back into the office that is probably because they need to look at you to trust that you're working right and that's that's not for your benefit that's for the, the executives benefit mm -hmm. um so those companies that are embracing remote work now are also embracing a better approach to working um so i would look for primarily companies and, and there's probably fewer of them every <laughs> right now because of uh, people have done a lot of shifting back into remote work sorry into office work but the ones who are still offering that that um uh, remote work those are the best i you know and you mentioned, you know, someone who wants to start a business and be an entrepreneur, that's fine. That that's a lot of these things start, you know, being an entrepreneur is a whole separate category of jobs. Absolutely. You know, that we could spend hours talking about what it means to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, remote work is just the facility of through where you're working. And right. it gives you the opportunity to do work remotely and get your, get a starting for your company without having to get an office uh, without having to, you know, buy a lot of equipment uh, or the spend overhead. time commuting. Yeah, it gives you a whole, it gives, it gives, it's making entre entrepreneurship more accessible to more people. Yeah. But there's, all, there's aspects to that, that there's barriers, other barriers that I think are not about remote work. It's just financial and time commitment and whether you have a good product or service to offer um, that are separate uh, that, uh, to this. But yeah, it certainly it certainly reduces barriers, and I think the thing I like the most about it is that it is re, you know it's removing barriers to working all together for people with disabilities and other other reasons for you know people who are not comfortable in an office. Yeah. You, know, you can come do a job remotely and turn the camera off and mm -hmm. be very productive. Or highly allergic to something in the environment <laughs> or just anything. There you like go. That. There's yeah. there's lots of reasons, right? And so I, I I'm just ha happy we're we're living in this time when it's, we're not forcing everyone to be everyone to be remote. That was the pandemic, right? We're now like, it's a choice. If you want to work remotely, here's the benefits. Here's some of the downsides. There's definitely downsides for some people. Those are they're far too downsided to to take advantage of it, you know. Um, and that's fine, you know. Like I said, that the, there's there's definitely people who who should not be working remotely in the same way. There's people who will not enjoy working at the office. Right. There's just it's a spectrum.
someone told me the other day and I'm trying to think of who it was, but, um, we were talking about parenting and marriage and they were like, people just don't tell you about the hard part about marriage, um, or parenting. Yeah. And, you know, cause people are always excited about the celebration and, you know, the birth and, um, and I feel like remote work is the same that, you know, there definitely needs to be a realistic expectation. Like you were saying before, um, about what we're going into, but there's still a lot of joy in it. Like, I'm very thankful to have, you know, the ability to see my, my family when I can and the freedom that it's given me and actually literally the freedom to move to different States, um, over the course of the last 13, 14 years. Um, I think I've lived in four different States now. Um, so yeah, I think you just have to have a healthy dose of reality that is not all roses, but there's still mm -hmm. a lot of joy that can come from it. If you do it well, if you, if you pursue those yeah. things, and make, be intentional about having a social life outside of work. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, there's a, there's a better chance you might spiral, you know, uh, if, if you get into some bad habits that, uh, you know, you, and whether that might be, uh, working too much or you're not getting enough rest or taking care of yourself or, yeah. you know, uh, alcohol or drugs, you know, that, that there's no, no separation between the two and it can, mm. it can get worse. Um, mm. you know, unfortunately I think that, uh, everyone on our team is, is, uh, is either managing that well, or doesn't have a problem. With yeah. It. I haven't uh, but heard it's that many that stories that, of that, but yeah. I guess it could, it, it's been, since you don't have yeah. the people from work that would miss you, um, you know, like yeah. if they're not going to see you. Can day. notice differences on you that, uh, that might call it out. Right. So, right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, any final thoughts before we follow up here and call uh, it? No, I think, I think it, uh, hopefully you got what you wanted out of it. Uh, it's been a good conversation. I really appreciate your time today. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead one more time and just tell us, um, how people could reach you if they were interested in learning more about Virtura. 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 Yes. The best way is just to go to our website. We have a contact us form on there. It's, uh, V I R T I R A. And uh, we also have a book you can buy on Amazon, The Power of Remote, which covers off lots of big topics. And that's the best place to find it is Amazon. Yeah, we found it actually through the process of this. I mean, we can, you can apparently buy it in some Barnes and Nobles and some airports and whatnot, but 80% of all books in, uh, in the world are sold on Amazon. So that's probably where you can get it from. The place to be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Shane. I'm going to wrap it up here. This has been April Malone with Shane Spriggs. And yes, I work from home. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you, April.